Hey guys, welcome. In this video, we will discuss about a topic called Design Technology Co-Optimization, also called as DTCO. The concept of DTCO existed in the semiconductor industry from very long time, but it has become popular nowadays because we have moved towards extremely complex submicron processes where the DTCO has become very essential. So without wasting time, let's get started with the topic. IC technology scaling had a golden age when Denard scaling was applicable. At that time, the task of fabrication process development, also sometimes called as the process bring up, and the library circuit design. The library circuit design is nothing but the design of standard cells and IPs. These two were separate and did not need any feedback. Now you see I have written it as process technology and design implementation over here, but it means that process, what process technology means is the process bring up itself and the design implementation means be it the design of the standard cells or uh, IPs, etc. What used to happen over there is nothing but what they had was a single design and they used to shrink it and use it and shrink it and use it. So the physical and electrical models for scale devices and interconnects were derived and IP design progressed while process was being quantified. Later, the development of contactless local front end of the line metallization and the transition to the damascene copper based back end of the line introduced some additional consideration. But still, the process bring up was separate and the IP design were still uh, relatively distinct. Relatively, in newer technology nodes, because of the complexity skyrocketing, the advanced technology nodes with several factors led to the need for a much closer collaboration between the process and the library development. So let's try to understand why do we need uh, DTCO. So DTCO is required to reduce time to market. There is always a competition. And let's say I have a product which has to be released this year and I need to see my competitor. So if he is re releasing a product much better than mine, then my product will not succeed and it will be a failure. So because of this, if DTCO was not introduced, then projects will miss its schedule and because of that the companies will lose huge amount of money millions of dollars and there are cases that projects are cancelled be just because of uh, this DTCO was not introduced properly and the project has missed its schedule if we don't include DTCO properly then we may not be able to tune a particular design with respect to a particular process such as we cannot we may not be able to tune it for performance also cost becomes a problem as i said because we may miss our schedule and also there are technology trade offs such as performance as i mentioned and power and many other stuff because of the design rule changes uh, we may have to trade off between them we will see what are the trade offs that are going to happen uh, later so this is why we use DTCO. It's extremely important in semiconductor industry and its business. Now let's try to understand the relation between the technology and design teams because the, at the end of the day what we are trying to understand is design and technology co-optimization. So we need to understand what technology guys do or the process technology uh, team will do and the design team will do and how do they interact with each other. So the technology or process technology team need to provide options so that it can be evaluated and best option can be chosen uh, for particular uh, type of design. Process technology teams pro provide the design team something called PDK or process design kit and this is the handoff between the process technology team uh, and the design team. With this PDK as reference, the design team or some other team has to evaluate which process technology we, they have to use or which 
kind of PDK they have to use? What are the changes? What happens is the technology team gives the options. Uh, you can use this PDK or that PDK. And at that time, the thing is this, that the PDK should be ready. And it takes huge amount of time to uh, prepare PDKs. And to make a decision between which PDK to use, takes a lot of time as well but that is because the design level analysis is required uh, to understand which pdk is the best option for our design and that's the reason why we need dtco so what is dtco dtco solutions are brought to help semiconductor technology and design teams by enabling earlier exploration of technology choices and design styles and assessing their impact on silicon targets now what we are saying is we can get an idea of which technology is better at the earlier phases of the design that is really good so that we can make a decision the thing is this that nowadays we assume that let's say let's say there is a three nanometer technology is being developed we assume that the three nanometer technology is already ready and make our design but that is not true. Three nanometer technology will be happening. It's it's uh, uh, it's not matured. The technology is not matured, and they are developing it at the same time we are working. So by the time we realize that it is matured, it might be too late for us to design. So that's the reason why we start doing the design very early and that's the reason why we may not be able to tune our design to that technology and that technology offers di different design styles and different uh, choices of design rules as well and we may not be able to use it uh, properly and if we use dtco solutions we will be able to get an idea of what that technology will be perf almost uh, accurately much before it is being actually uh, given to us given to us in what sense it will be given to us by a pdk right given to the design team as a pdk so what are the technology trade-offs that can be done at the uh, time of dtco right because the design team can make these choices such as device architectures different materials actually the device architecture is nothing but for a standard cell that can be multiple different types of architectures we will see one example later at the end different materials let's say if some for a lower metal layer uh, such as a local metal layer inside the standard cell we may want to use a different material for so as to improve its uh, performance that can also be done the process integration how we are going to integrate ips and at the end how we are going to um, integrate even the dies into a single soc that can also be uh, different and those can be choices as well and the device performance and the design rules so the design rules make huge differences in device performance for example let's take a small if we are going to do a small change in the design rule of let's say contact to uh, metal spacing which will lead to the total cell design again we have to do the cell design again and which it will impact our performance of the entire chip because this cell might be instantiated everywhere in the chip and that will definitely make a, a difference in the performance of the chip so this is how important uh, the process technology evaluation is if we make a small mistake in choosing the right process technology type then we will end up being huge losses so let's see some of the dtco solutions so the approach basically in dtco needs uh, expertise from across multiple uh, domains basically so such as uh, atomistic simulation uh, tcad lithography modeling and ip development custom and digital design methodologies to address the challenges some of the solutions of the DTC are nothing but virtual PDKs. Virtual PDKs are the PDKs which are gener quickly generated through simulation based methods. So these DTCO solutions which are based on simulation and physics models can help implementation and design analysis much before 
the form three pdks are actually res, uh, released to the design team actually these pdks which are released at the end are uh, absolutely accurate the virtual pdks are not uh, as to to complete as these pdks but it will give enough insight so that we can do and understand things about different uh, technology types and which one we can use for our best so one of the example is uh, i have shown in this figure down as you can see this dtco was done for sub 5 nanometer uh, technology nodes so in case of sub uh, 5 nanometer technology nodes we are going for uh, something called as gaa the gate all around transistors which are next generation transistors uh, after our fin fets which are fin transistors in gaa what happens because of the complexity of shrinking and because of its type of transistors we may not be able to scale down the copper if we scale down the coppers it will be huge uh, resistance so what did did was they went for uh, checking whether we can introduce some kind of other uh, material such as cobalt or molybdenum something like that because of that you might be you, you can see over here that they have given six different choices of different track plans such as 6.5 track or 6 track and 5.5 track 5 track and they have also given options such as which material to use whether it's a copper and what's the width of the copper 40 nanometer 30 nanometer 50 nanometer copper and also they have introduced uh, a buried uh, molybdenum or ruthenium metals which can be used so out of all these they select a wider copper metal for power and normal uh, copper wire for, for signals so this is how the dtco analysis happens and it gives much better insight of process technology and that will reduce the time to market and it will tune the design for particular process technology that's all for now thanks a lot for watching and i hope you understood some uh, some of the very important things about dtco and bye bye <laughs>